Now, Lindsay, your new album comes out today, Now, I've been told this album has a very Nightmare Before Christmassy type of vibe. What can you tell us about that? Yes, um, the leading single, I mean, I guess it's the name of the album too, but the, so the title track of the album is Snow Waltz, and I went for a little bit of that, like, fusion between, like, Halloween and Christmas to kind of warm up the album, because I feel like there's that gray area where people are like, it's too early for Christmas. Oh, no, I want to celebrate Halloween, but I want Christmas music, you know, so there's a lot of heated discussions. It gets all almost political at some points and so I anyways I made a song that I felt really towed that line well and the music video was so fun it's very very like Nightmare Before Christmas skeleton meets uh the holidays vibe and it was so fun to make I'm really excited for the song and I think it's the perfect lead into the holidays can we expect that vibe to be implemented into the tour so yeah, we'll be doing, um, you know, tons of the songs off the new album are going to be in the live show. We're like already starting to rehearse them and learning all the new choreo, which just makes it so fresh. Because like I said, I've done this, you know, I've done Christmas tours now three times with one album and it's exciting to now have like a bunch of new material. And um, we are going to bring, I, I mean, I love bringing music videos to life on stage so that it's almost this familiarity for people. They're like, oh, she dressed up like a pirate in this music video. And now she's a pirate on stage and they're doing some similar like Antics. And so I think that's really fun. So we'll definitely be bringing a little bit of that, like, you know, that spooky vibe into one of the songs in the show. Now, one thing I feel some people forget about you is that you actually have a gorgeous singing voice. Can we expect to hear your voice on the album? Yes. My vocals are like peppered throughout the album. Like even on the, the first single that came out, there's like these background kind of like operatic voices. They're me. They're fake opera. When I say opera, I say that very lightly. It's me pretending to sing like, oh, you know, <laughs> um, and it actually some of the songs go quite high. So I was really straining. Um, there's no like you know, lead, lead vocal, but I do sing like a few lines in some of the songs. Like there's a bit in a holy night that I sing. Um, I sing one of the verses and same with O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. So it's like, I'm peppered throughout, but there's nothing like Santa baby where it's like that it's a singing track, you know? All right. Now, if we could change gears really quick, I, I want to geek out about this for a quick minute. Uh, you have your own violin line now. How did that start? Yeah, I mean, I've been sponsored by Yamaha for years and they've been such an amazing partner. And, you know, um, so after working with them for so long and after having countless fans ask me, like, what violin do you recommend? Um, I never quite knew what a great answer was. And so I worked with Yamaha to make um, not only just like my own line of a violin, but also put on it all the bells and whistles that I like to have on my violins. Uh, for example, I think the coolest thing to me is there's these custom pegs that are on it that anyone who's a violinist, you know, that it's really hard to tune a violin in a pinch, like the, the peg stick. They're not like, you know, a guitar where you can screw it. Well, these ones are special violin pegs that are like a screw so you can in a pinch on stage you know or in the middle of orchestra class like quickly really? tune without having to like really dig in there um I feel like all violins should have them so I put them on mine and it's cool because no one makes violins like that they're a customized piece and they're on my violin you have a really cool and unique charity it's called the upside fund and it's been helping people be able to pay their hospital bills now can you tell us a little more about that Yes. Um, the Upside Fund um, is something that I started years ago after, you know, I lost both my best friend and my dad to cancer. And um, so I spent actually the holidays in the hospital, you know, to an extent with each one of them at different times. And, um, you know, so the following Christmas after my dad had passed away, my heart was just so full remembering that I was in the hospital the previous year. And so I just went on Instagram and I said, Hey, if you're struggling with medical bills or you're in the hospital this season, like, let me help you. And so I got thousands of, or I got hundreds, probably like close to a thousand emails of people all sharing what they needed help with. And like medical bills is such a problem in our country. And so, um, at first I just started like paying people's, you know, helping people pay their medical bills. And then I decided to turn it into an official 501c3. So I didn't get in trouble with, you know, it's actually quite dangerous to give away large sums of money. I learned um, you can get in trouble for that. So um, start a 501c3. And it's been really cool to see um, now my fans step up to the table and, you know, they donate or we can, you know, put proceeds from tickets to it. Um, and it's just amazing to be able to help people 
in what I think is, you know, the darkest time of my life was watching loved ones struggle like that. And so to be able to like be a little bit of a light spot for people going through something like that has been a really huge, um, just, you know, I don't know. It, it lifts me, even though it's heavy, it, it lifts me. And I'm grateful for that opportunity that I have. Love that. That's a really great way to help people. Thank you for doing that. Now back to your Christmas album, there are like a million Christmas songs out there. How in the world do you pick which ones go on your album? Oh man. Well, you know, because I'm a violinist, it's like certain melodies sing well on violins and certain you're like, Oh, that has to be done by a singer. Um, so it was really fun to just find which songs made my violin sing the best um, but also for me, if you're going to do a song that's been done hundreds of times and covered by like a million different artists, if I couldn't think of a way to make it feel special, you know, it didn't make my list. I had to be like, OK, how can I take like joy to the world and put a twist on it that gives somebody a reason to listen to my version? You know, there's so many versions. Why would anyone want to hear a violin one? Oh, it actually works really well as a Celtic tune. Ooh, that gets me excited, you know, or like. Uh, you know, we did God Rest You Merry Gentlemen in this really quirky, like mechanical, almost steampunk yeah. feeling vibe. And, you know, so it's kind of finding vibes I like and then finding the song that will fit that vibe. And then when I start to get excited, I'm like, oh, it's a good one. You know, this because it's suddenly there's a reason to listen to it. Like I'm in competition with a lot of other versions. Now about original tracks, how do you go about getting original tunes to stand out from the other Christmas classics out there? I feel like that is the big secret everybody is trying to crack. Ever since Mariah Carey <laughs> did All I Want for Christmas is You, everybody has been trying to be the new version of that song, the new one to stand out. I feel like Kelly Clarkson got kind of close with um, her Underneath the Tree song. Like that one, you know, I, I think she might be in there, but it's really hard to find a way. And so that is the code everyone's trying to crack. I feel like every artist takes their shot. I've taken mine now twice. So, um, but it, it's always really fun to write original Christmas songs because there's just such a wide array of words and sounds and feelings to draw from. It's like this bucket of words that you're like, okay, we just got to pick, you know, several of these and write a song around them. Um, so it makes it really fun to write Christmas music because there's, there's just the vibe, you know, the vibe, you know, the recipe, you just got to make it. You'll be happy to know that Christmas Come On is number one on my Christmas playlist every year. It's the first one I listen to. Love that song, <gasps> and uh, thank you for that. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. Good old Becky G. And Becky G, she was fantastic on this album. That's the other thing I love about you is you're always collaborating with other artists, and it uh, tuned me on to a lot of really cool music in my life. So how do you find some of these artists that you collaborate with? Um, I mean, it's always such a, like a juggling act sometimes, like, for example, um, one of the songs on this new album, um, has David Archuleta featuring on it. It's the song's called magic and it's so good. And the minute I like, as we were writing it, I turned to the producer and I was like, David Archuleta has to sing this, like, you know, and also I know David. So it's like, he's a text away. Um, so sometimes it's very easy because you like you know the voice, you know the sound, you know, and that's always great when that happens. Other times, like I wrote um, Crazy for Christmas with Bonnie McKee and she sang the demo and I was like, I'm sold. Like, I don't need anything else. Other times it's really hard where you have this great song, but you don't, you, you, you know, you're almost like just thinking and imagining and trying out different things and you have to find the right artist who doesn't have their own project and it becomes this really difficult puzzle to try to figure out like Becky G. We got her literally last minute. We could not find anyone to sing the song that could hit those high notes. And then last second, we literally had to turn the album in like a few days later and she cut a demo. And so that was like, she just saved the day. Because sometimes it's like really tricky to find those features. But this album was nice because it all just made sense. And they came together really seamlessly, very naturally. 